You're listening to Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. In the studio with you, it's JJ, Darren, and Randy. We've got a wonderful extra show bonus episode for you today. We have Roger Ver here with us talking about all the, the important discussions regarding Bitcoin and, in fact, scaling and, and great stuff. So, uh, Roger, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me on, guys. So, uh, Roger, we have been talking about you. We've been covering Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies for about three and a half years now. Um, and obviously, you've come up a lot in the, the news feed and involvement in various things. You have pretty much been single-handedly responsible for the growth of numerous Bitcoin businesses. And in fact, your, uh, your investment wall on your webpage is full of the big names of Bitcoin, many of them. And you, you're, you've been a staunch proponent of Bitcoin since just the early days. Uh, what's, what's your overall take since, since you've started Bitcoin, since you discovered it, and you've, you've grown, you've, you've learned about it, just give, get an overall view of what you, you, you decided Bitcoin is. What is Bitcoin? Uh, for me, Bitcoin is a tool that can be used to move the world in a direction in which each individual has more control over their own lives, their own finances, and can interact with any other individual anywhere in the world without having to get permission from anybody else. And to me, that's a wonderful, wonderful thing for the whole world. So I've been uh, working tirelessly um, to make that happen sooner rather than later. And here we are, you know, I've been involved in a Bitcoin about uh, six years at this point. And now, you know, it, it's People know what it is at this point, and may, most of the major websites accept it. So that's a, a pretty good success story. But uh, as you mentioned, scaling has become a big issue because so many people are using Bitcoin around the world now that with the current architecture of the network, there's not additional capacity for these new people that want to start using Bitcoin. Right. And and that's you know something Darren and I, uh, once again... And and we'll get to you, of course. I don't. I'm just sort of giving you some some groundwork of what what we're about. We've actually been bearish on Bitcoin um, for uh, not bearish in the bad sense of like get rid of all your Bitcoin. Bearish on the the future growth of Bitcoin since the blockchain debate has. Uh, I mean, initially it was okay. A debate is great. Let's talk about this. Let's have a discussion. But when it sort of stagnated, we both looked at Bitcoin and then the other currencies available, and we we sort of had a. A more bearish, uh, Darren, can you back me up on this? Or? Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> I definitely changed my viewpoint of Bitcoin with now it's at maximum capacity and they're slow to bring any new capacity. And, and uh, it seems like the main developers are preferring very complicated solutions compo- uh, compared to a very simple, uh, easy, quick fix. You've already got it tested solution. Yeah, it sounds like we're all on the same page here. And there's, like you said, there's the very simple, easy, quick solution that that works, and we know works, and has worked well for the first, you know, eight and a half years of Bitcoin's existence. You know, on-chain scaling brought Bitcoin from nothing to where it is today. We know that works. If it's if something's working and working well, don't change it. So, um, but suddenly all these developers want to make all these much more complicated systems that maybe will work and maybe they'll work very, very well. But we don't know. They're not tested yet, and. Don't break something that's working today and working well in the hopes of, of something that might work tomorrow. And that seems to be exactly what the current Bitcoin Core uh, developers have, have been wanting to do. But myself and a number of others are, are uh, you know, trailing a, a, a different path there. So for people kind of newer to cryptocurrencies, can you kind of give a, a little rundown of the block size debate and where we find ourselves now? Yeah, so the the people that don't want the blocks to increase, they seem to think that if Bitcoin blocks remain very small, Bitcoin will be able to be run on very, very cheap computers. Right now, today, you can literally run an entire Bitcoin full node on a Raspberry Pi, and you can sync the entire history of Bitcoin, which is more than eight years and millions and millions of transactions, from start to finish on our $25 Raspberry Pi in about a week. And if you, if you shell out like a whole $100 or even a little bit more for a computer, you can knock that down to about a day. Um, so it's not like we're talking about very expensive computers at this point. And with the current size of the blockchain, which is allowed to be updated to, to the tune of one megabyte every 10 minutes on average, um, that allows for around 2,000 and some change Bitcoin transactions every 10 minutes. Bitcoin's become so popular now that more than that many people want to use it every 10 minutes. So people like myself, and it sounds like you guys are in agreement, why, the, the easy and simple and fast and safe solution is to increase the, the amount of transactions that can be recorded in the blockchain every 10 minutes from 1 megabyte to 2 megabytes. 
and that would instantly double the transactional throughput of Bitcoin, and you just have a little bit bigger blockchain, and it takes a little bit more CPU and a little bit more bandwidth to handle all that. But it's the year 2016. CPUs are fast. Storage is cheap. Bandwidth is fast. Like This isn't even remotely an issue at this point. And one thing that I think the other side of the equation doesn't take into consideration, they think that because it takes a more expensive computer to run a full node, less people will run it. Well, you need to look at how many people are using Bitcoin. If you expand it so that Bitcoin can be used by tens or hundreds or of millions or even a billion plus people around the world, you're going to have a heck of a lot more people running full nodes around the world than the few million people uh, that we have using Bitcoin today and the few thousand full nodes that we have today. So the best way to make Bitcoin censorship resistant and impervious to government control and attacks is to get as many people around the world using it as quickly as we possibly can. And uh, that's been my goal from day one. And uh, never in my wildest dreams did I think that people would want to, to take the opposite approach and not let more people use Bitcoin that didn't want to use Bitcoin today. But that's exactly what we're seeing happen. But uh, there's lots of effort underway to, to, to change that and allow all these new people around the world to use Bitcoin. And so, so what are the, some of the problems that people are running into because of the current limit on the block size? Sure. So transactions can take hours or even days to be confirmed. The fees are getting ever and ever higher. Um, Bitcoin transactions used to cost a fraction of a penny. And in my standard explanation of Bitcoin, I used to be able to tell people you can send and receive any amount of money with anyone anywhere in the world basically for free. And today that's not true anymore. Average transactions cost tens of cents. Earlier today I, I did a Bitcoin transaction. It cost me $6 and something cents to send it. Like this is a real serious problem for Bitcoin and it needs to be solved quickly. And uh, a lot of other people don't seem to feel this urgency, but uh, I think it's really, really important. And there's a really, really simple solution knocking on everybody's front door. And uh, a number of miners and, and, and businesses are, are starting to see that. And uh, it seems to be called the Bitcoin Unlimited, which allows the miners and the people running the nodes to uh, choose what the maximum size block they're willing to produce is and specify what the maximum size block they're willing to accept is. And then it just kind of becomes an emergent property of the network itself as to what size blocks will be produced. And uh, I think that's the, the right track. So Bitcoin Unlimited, we have a story we're going to be talking about in the, in the main show. But uh, via Bit BTC founder and CEO uh, has come out in support of it, adding sort of uh, if you sort of total up the hashing power of, of what's out there. And then he mentions... In the uh, CryptoCoin News article, the uh, Bitmain CEO, Jihan Wu, has also stated interest in Bitcoin Unlimited. Is, uh, and, and their their total, just looking at today, if I look at blockchain.info, the, the total of what's available right now is 34.7% of the network hashing power. So you're, the support is growing for Unlimited. And do you, what's the point at which, you know, there's, there's a decision to be made? And when you, what's the, you know, the sort of short-term goals and, and uh, outlook for that? Well, ultimately, the decision happens at, at 51%. But uh, I think if, you know, Bitcoin Unlimited blocks get up to 25 or 30 or 35%, I think that's pretty close to being a tipping point. I know every, every additional percentage of support that uh, Bitcoin Unlimited has on the network the easier it'll be to get additional miners to come on board with it. So nobody wants to be first, but everyone you know, feels happy and safe to, to follow others. So if Bitcoin Unlimited gets up to 30%, I, I think it'll be really easy for it to get to 60 or 80 or even 90%. Right. And, and, and we, we covered in, in June of last year, 2015, episode 109. And, and I, I like this episode title from Ron Paul, Don't Steal the Government Hates Competition. But we mentioned that a consortium of the five largest Chinese mining pools had agreed that the block size needed to be raised and that eight megabytes was a good number. Now, this is this is uh, more than a year ago, and and a lot of the um, uh, sort of uh, advocates for the segwit and uh, all of that sort of complications are, are concerned that the Chinese infrastructure and infrastructure outside of, of Western countries isn't there. But that's after the Chinese con uh, mining pools had already stated that eight megabytes was good, let alone two. So, it, part of the frustration that I'm seeing. And, and and experiencing myself is the fact that the debate has has seemed very one sided. It seems like the the people who understand the the blocks ought to get bigger are drowned out by a sea of people with with various claims and 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 in just nonsensical arguments. How do you deal with that? How do you deal with trying to uh, you have this logical, reasoned approach, and then but you're met with some of this uh, this uh, almost like 
uh, in fantasy that they're throwing at you, these Ill- illogical conclusions to, to things that have an easy solution. I mean, how do you, how do you fight this or, or confront it? Yeah, I, I think the, the answer to speech you disagree with is more speech, not, not censorship. And we've seen the other side take the exact opposite approach. We've been saying things that they don't agree with. And rather than you know, speaking out about why we're wrong or what part we're not understanding or what they think, uh, they've been silencing us from the most popular Bitcoin discussion platforms. And that's when things really turned nasty and made people feel really upset. And uh, I think that's, that just shows people that don't support the, you know, the free discussion of ideas about Bitcoin cannot be trusted to maintain Bitcoin censorship resistance. If they're willing to censor people that, that have different opinions from discussing it online, What's to say that they're not going to take the same stance about people that are using Bitcoin for transactions they don't approve? So don't trust people that don't support free speech. And I think that's a really important concept that should be gotten out to, to the Bitcoin community as a whole. Definitely. Well, and other than other than censoring information, I mean, what what arguments are being presented for not increasing the block size? Um, their argument is basically that Bitcoin nodes, full nodes, will... T- be more expensive to run, so therefore okay. fewer people will run them and Bitcoin will be able to be controlled by governments. But I, like I said before, I think it's the exact opposite. The more people that are using Bitcoin, the more businesses and people that will have a reason to run a full node, and the more full nodes around the world, the harder Bitcoin is to control. So the best way to make Bitcoin hard to control by governments is to get more people using it. So I, I think the, the small block camp has it, has it backwards in regards to that. Okay, Even though I understand their intent. I share their goal of, of making and keeping Bitcoin censorship resistant. I just think their strategy about is, is, on how to achieve that is wrong. All right. Well, I want to get back to Bitcoin Unlimited. Um, so, so how is it currently running, and is it, ex- is it accepting blocks over one megabyte? Uh, Bitcoin Unlimited is being run on you know, several hundred nodes around the world. It's uh, responsible for around 15% of the global Bitcoin hash rate at the moment. And this just um, started. This has jumped up really fast. Yeah, it's jumped up pretty quick. Um, it's not currently mining blocks that are bigger than one megabyte because all the other nodes will will reject those blocks. But at some point, once Bitcoin Unlimited nodes are more than 50% of the network and more than 50% of the hash pot rate, um, they will start signaling that they're intending to make blocks that are bigger than, than one megabyte, and then everybody will have to come on board with that. And uh, I think and hope that uh, by the end of this year, we'll see that tipping point happen. And I'm working really hard to create a, a Bitcoin.com mining pool to, to further those efforts. Excellent. Are we looking at a hard fork? There's always... I, there, nobody has ever said that we should never, ever have a hard fork ever. It's sure. It's a question of, of whether, when, and under what circumstances. Mm-hmm. And uh, the fact that Bitcoin is not able to scale to keep up with consumer demand at the moment, I think very clearly warrants that it's time to to take on the risks of, of having a hard fork. So Roger, this is Darren. I have a question. So what, 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 what do you have a strategy if this doesn't work for some reason, people don't switch over to a, a larger block Bitcoin. Uh, what would your, what would you do in such a case? Yeah. My, my backup plan is what you're asking yes. about there. And I've already taken some steps in regards to the backup plan. So Bitcoin I think is vulnerable to competition in two areas. One is scaling because Bitcoin is already at you know maximum capacity of the current network with the current network architecture. Uh, two is the level of, of privacy uh, available in Bitcoin is much, much, much weaker than what people initially thought it had. And so any other coin that wants to compete with Bitcoin can compete on those two areas, scalability and fungibility. And scalability, you know, all these other coins have a lot more room to grow before they start bumping into scaling issues. Um, but there's a number of coins that have a lot more privacy uh, and fungibility than Bitcoin does. And so for the first time ever in my entire, you know, history of being involved in Bitcoin, which is longer than most people's, um, just within the last month or two, uh, I actually sold some of my, my Bitcoins for, for some of these altcoins that provide greater uh, privacy than Bitcoin. And... Uh, so that's that's my backup plan, I suppose. If Bitcoin isn't allowed to scale, um, there's lots of other cryptocurrencies that would love mm-hmm. to to take Bitcoin's top spot in in the in the ecosystem, and maybe they will if if Bitcoin isn't allowed to mm-hmm. to grow. Yeah, I saw your tweet your tweet that went out that was talking up or that pointed out that the altcoin market share was growing. I guess is that that's the way you might describe it. Yeah, and it's it's really sad and frustrating to see it's not growing 
for for just you know just because it's growing because the Bitcoin network's at a hundred percent capacity. The user experience is is much poorer than it used to be. The double spin window is now hours or days, whereas it used to be ten minutes. Uh, it's a big, big, big problem in the Bitcoin network, and it, uh, it's really frustrating that other people don't want to solve this problem in a timely manner. It almost seems a solution that seems so easy. Yeah, it almost seems like Bitcoin is is a failure to innovate. Their fail their failure is growing. The, the, the point that I'm seeing with other currencies, and I think Ethereum might be the the prime candidate, is that there's a lot of growth happening. There's a lot of changes, and and crypto is constantly changing. The currency and the user base and the experience and what you can do with it is constantly changing and growing and evolving. And I think the more that Bitcoin stands still, the more it's going to be left behind. And, you know, as simple as, as increasing the block sizes, that, that would be a huge change. But yet it's one that, that has, you know, the funniest part is that the block limit wasn't always there. And, and, you know, it was like initially there wasn't a limit on the block size, like the one megabyte limit we have now, right? Right. And then eventually when they put that in as an anti-spam measure, the, the, the blocks at the time they put that in were less than 10 kilobytes. So it was never, ever, ever... A actual block size limit. It was just way, way, way above the size of the actual blocks up until just recently. Uh, so many people started using Bitcoin that it started bumping up against that limit. And so that's a really, really, really big problem. So in order to keep Bitcoin the same and growing in the same way that it grew the, you know, the last eight years, that limit needs to be raised. Definitely. Um, do you, what's, what's your opinion? I mean, Ethereum, we talk about forking with the, the, the uh, Bitcoin Unlimited if, if something were to happen. Do you see like a fork with Bitcoin Unlimited in the future, potentially, similar to what happened with S and ETC? I think it's a lot less likely to go on that way with Bitcoin because the difficulty for Bitcoin adjusts every 2016 blocks, I believe. Um, whereas the Ethereum difficulty adjusts all the time. So because there's so many blocks between the difficulty adjustment uh, on Bitcoin, it would be much, 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 much more difficult for the losing side of the fork to continue on because the difficulty would be so difficult and it will take so long for the difficulty to readjust. So I think it's much less likely to happen with Bitcoin. But even if it does, it's not the end of the world. Everybody still gets what they want. The people on the big block side get that version of Bitcoin to use and the people on the small block side get that version to use. And ironically enough, um, the small block side, if, if there is a hard fork, it'll alleviate all the congestion on the small block side anyhow because the vast majority of the commerce will be going on in the big block side. So. Well, some of the, uh, the the recent scaling Bitcoin conference that was held in uh, Milan, we we saw a little bit of criticism that it was just basically focusing on second layer uh, overlays. Talk a lot of talk about Lightning Network and Segwit and Mimblewimble and other uh, sidechain style solutions. Um, what what are your thoughts on these proposals, and and do you see promise in some of them? Yeah, so I, I attended the scaling Bitcoin Milan conference, and it, the conference was called Scaling Bitcoin. But there was actually very, very little about scaling. It's certainly very, very little about scaling in the short term. And uh, very little about Bitcoin, too. To be honest, there was lots of talk about things other than Bitcoin. So I felt that there was a bit of a false advertising going on in, in regards to what that conference was going to be about. I also thought it was very, very telling that they didn't really allow any of the proponents of on-chain scaling to present at the conference, despite you know numerous companies uh, that are proponents of on-chain scaling actually sponsoring the event. So... I think that might be the last scaling Bitcoin uh, titled conference by those organizers that I attend. Well, you held a, uh, a sort of protest, didn't you? Uh, yeah, we had a free speech party that night as well. And from everything I can tell, just as many people attended the free speech party uh, as the official party, just as many or even maybe more, um, which is, I think, a really good testament. And then 100% of the Chinese miners in attendance came to the free speech party and didn't go to the official event. Wow. Uh, including the the CEO of uh, via BTC, which is the mining pool with about ten percent of the global hash rate that's mining Bitcoin unlimited blocks at the moment. So, uh, do you think we're seeing the Bitcoin community being co opted? Uh, I don't know. If, I don't think co opted is the right word. I think most of the people on the small block camp have the same end goals or similar end goals. To the people on the big block camp, they just see a completely different strategy on how to get there that I don't think is anywhere near as effective or safe for Bitcoin. So, All right. Um, yes. Uh, so once again, you mentioned the, uh, the Reddit and the censorship. Um, do, you, do you still take part in, in what's going on in Reddit or you, you, you sort of moved on from there or what's going on? 
Um, I, I post fairly actively, you know, maybe a couple times a week on a uh, RBTC, which okay. is another Reddit where p- free talk is actually allowed. Um, unlike our BT, I'm sorry, unlike our Bitcoin, which was initially where everybody was. And, uh, and then there, the, the main forum used to be BitcoinTalk.org. But again, the same story there. If you're an advocate of on-chain scaling, which was very, very, very clear. Broke up a little bit there. Bitcoin or on BitcoinTalk.org. So now if I participate in online social media, it's on our BTC or forum.bitcoin.com. Well, uh, you've you've definitely, like I said at the beginning, invested in a lot of uh, startups and businesses and Bitcoin um, entrepreneurships and trials, whatnot. What are you, what is your like of your investments of the things you've you've uh, helped spurn uh, and growth in? What is your sort of favorite? What's some of the things that have excited you, or, or ones that are your your sort of favorites and that you're really surprised with? You're really happy about? My favorite is, is Bitcoin, for right. sure, by far and away. I mean, Bitcoin has been the most fun. No, I mean, which... Bitcoin has been the most profitable. Like, Bitcoin itself yeah. has been a okay. better and more exciting ride than any of the individual businesses in the ecosystem that that I've uh, invested in. If you want me to name specific businesses... Um, well, no, and it's sort of like... it's it's. Well, I'm basically getting, like, uh, an investor's perspective of, like, you you do this for a lot of different things. You invest in, in, in a wide variety of different things. Of course, Bitcoin is one of them, but... Um, like it is from your, from your viewpoint, from yours, cause I, I don't know what that looks like, which one, like, you're just like, Oh, I was, I've invested in this and it was just like, it, things turned out wonderfully. Or I'm really happy with the way that it worked out other than Bitcoin itself. I'm not sort of asking you to pick a favorite for any certain reason or anything. I'm just sort of like, what's as an investor, like what's your, your little highlight or, or highlight reel sort of feel. Um, if I had to pick two uh, that I, I like, I guess the most is, is blockchain.info um, because it's brought Bitcoin to more people around the world than any other wallet. You know, it's, it's more popular than every single other Bitcoin wallet combined. Um, so more people are using Bitcoin because of blockchain than any other wallet in the world. Um, and then another one that I'm really fond of is uh, purse.io because it gives everybody a reason to actually want to use Bitcoin in their daily lives because you can save 15% or even more off of everything from Amazon. And that's a substantial savings. So now suddenly people that had heard of Bitcoin and maybe thought the tech was a little bit interesting, they now actually have a real reason to use Bitcoin in their daily lives. So uh, purse.io is another one of the, the ones I'm really fond of. Excellent. Um, what's your thoughts on Ethereum? That's, I definitely want to get your, 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 your ideas about Ethereum. Um, to be honest, it's just kind of, you know, I, I watch it a little bit, but I've been so busy with Bitcoin, I'm, I'm not an expert when it comes to Ethereum. Um, I don't follow the, the day-to-day politics of Ethereum, um, but from a lot of people to claim that the hard fork of Ethereum was this you know, absolute disaster, I don't see it that way at all, and the market doesn't seem to see it that way at all either, because the market cap of Ethereum and Ethereum Classic after the fork was more than, than before the fork. So that shows very clearly that the people that are willing to store their value in the, both Ethereums valued them being separate and valued the fork having happened than, than staying the same. So Right. Um, well, Ethereum just forked again yesterday. And in fact, they're planning to fork again in the near future to fix a, a few of the, the attacks. You know, they've been attacked since the, uh, the DAO fork. And it's in, in order to fix their problems, they have no compunction about forking and making dynamic and, and decisive decisions regarding their, uh, their cryptocurrency and, and whatnot. Um, I'm just sort of, it's, it's just a very stark contrast with the Bitcoin uh, community when just mentioning the fork will, will get you, you know, shut out of conversations. So, um, <clears throat> well, I, do, I, I actually want to get back to Bitcoin Unlimited for a second too, um, just because I, there aren't so many miners compared to people who just use Bitcoin. Um, if a Bitcoin user wanted to support Bitcoin Unlimited or wanted to show support for Bitcoin Unlimited, what, what could they do to drive or affect change if they aren't mining uh, I guess they can run a full node if, if that's fun for them. Uh, and another thing that you can do is you can speak out against the, the suppression of dissenting opinions on the main platforms so or participate on the alternative platforms, which are uh, rbtc or forum.bitcoin.com. And, uh, you know, don't don't let people suppress dissenting opinions. I, Bitcoin's supposed to be about free, you know, the freedom to transact with others. And if you support that, of course you should be in favor of free speech. And the fact that a bunch of people that don't want to allow dissenting opinions are trying to wrest control of Bitcoin away from people that, that do support free speech, that should be really concerning to everybody. And are, are you still moderating on RBTC? 
So I have the top mod spot, but I, I almost never actually do any moderating myself. And there's a couple of other guys that, that do, you know, delete posts that uh, have to, you know, obvious malware or spam or, or scams or that sort of thing. But uh, if for people that want to actually discuss the issues, you're allowed to have any, any opinion you want over there. So, uh, so, you know, come join everybody over at RBTC if you support free speech and, and open discussions. Excellent. Good. Good. So, um, Roger, you... I, I heard uh, out of your camp there was this thunder. What was it? A thunder network or something going on? D do you uh, want to take some time to talk about that? Yeah. So there's lots of layer two technologies that are being worked on to allow Bitcoin to scale. A lot of your listeners have probably heard of the Lightning Network. Um, thunder is another version of the Lightning Network being uh, produced by Blockchain.info. But again, these are all technologies that are, I think, a long, long, long way away from being ready to be used by the average Joe on the street that just wants to pay for things or, or receive payments for things. Um, and we don't know for sure when or how well these things will work or if they're even going to work at all at this point. Um, whereas we know 100% for sure on-chain scaling of Bitcoin works and works really, really well. And uh, do, you know, if something's working well, don't break it. Don't change it. Yeah, and, and that's the, the segwit and the separating, uh, the, the changing the way the blocks are. It's it's sort of like the a lot of the argument of the the people I'm seeing that are small block are like, they, they don't make these changes. Bitcoin can't handle it. Why are you trying to change something that, that already works? But that's what SegWit is doing. That's what these other things are doing. They're changing something that already works. And I don't, I mean, my, my, and part of what we talk about on the show is the fact that it, it almost seems like they're trying to position it in such a way that you need to be a part of the Lightning Network in order to even understand what's in the blocks going forward. And that's just sort of the direction I see it going. And I don't know if that's where it's going to go. But it's 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 complicating things, and not trans not having all the nodes get all the data as they used to do. I think that's going in the wrong direction again, and I just can't understand why this is actually happening. And that's why I'm I'm sort of looking outside Bitcoin, uh, or or at least outside of Bitcoin Core. Yeah, no argument for me. And uh, I think if we want to figure out why that's happening, Gavin and Dries made an interesting observation that. We need to be careful to make sure that we don't have a bunch of engineers engineering for engineering's sake. Right. And I think that may be a lot of what's going on. Like, yeah, Lightning Network and Segregated Witness and this and that are all really fun and interesting and cool things. But, you know, there in, in engineering, there's a principle called KISS, K-I-S-S. It's called keep it simple, stupid. And I think that applies very, very clearly. We know it works with Bitcoin and it's simple and it doesn't break and it's worked for eight years. Keep it simple. Like, don't don't break that. So. Uh, any final questions, Randy? I, I just got one more. I wanted to see outside of um, you know outside of upgrading the the actual protocol and adding something like Bitcoin Unlimited or or just scaling. Um, are there any sort of external forces you're excited about? Things that are coming to market? Um, you know, I you know Kim dot com is back in the news, making lots of noise about uh, Mega Upload two point and the new uh, content production platforms like Steemit seem to be sort of. Uh, potentially bringing more people into the cryptocurrency world and introducing them to Bitcoin. Are there any projects like that that have caught your eye or your attention? Uh, I'm a fan of Open Bazaar. Open Bazaar seems pretty exciting to me as well. So. Excellent. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, uh, Chris Pacia, the the lead backend developer, is actually in our community here in New Hampshire, and so he he's, a, he's we hope to get him on the show again. But uh, we're really excited about that too. Is there anything you're looking to promote, Roger? Any sort of thing coming up that it, it, people can see you at or, or participate in, or something you want to share with people? Yeah, I, I guess two things there. So if you support free and open discussion of Bitcoin and, and think people should be allowed to have dissenting you know opinions and, and still express them, um, go and participate on Bitcoin.com. If you have a website that's currently linking to Bitcoin.org, I ask you to change it to Bitcoin.com. Uh, and then uh, I'll be at a conference uh, coming up in about uh, two and a half weeks here in London. Uh, you can find more information about that conference on uh, at conference.bitcoin.com as well. And uh, there'll be a whole bunch of people. Uh, John McAfee uh, will be giving the, the keynote presentation there. So there's going to be a whole bunch of Bitcoin uh, people there, and it's going to be a real fun time. And that's in London on November 6th and 7th. Excellent. Thank you so much for being on the show, Roger. Thank you guys so much for having me on. Take care. You too. Just a reminder that you can tune into Neocache Radio every Wednesday night. If you don't want to miss a single moment of awesome Neocache content, including special episodes and bonus interviews like the one you just heard, subscribe to our podcast on Google Play Music, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Podcast Addict, and more. Thanks again. This is JJ. 
Darren and Randy for Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. NeoCashRadio.com. <laughs>